Well, the member for Seven Hills. Thank you, Speaker. My question is directed to the Minister for Town and Tourism, well. Corrections and Veterans Affairs. Yeah. How is the New South Wales government delivering on its election commitment to place 200 veterans in the public sector roles by 2000? Thank you, Paul, the Minister for Town and Tourism, Corrections and Minister for Veterans Affairs. Thank you, um, thank you Madam Speaker, and thanks to the member for Seven Hills, who uh, uh, served his country well as a uh, member of the police force. I note, of course, the new member for Gosford came here in the chamber today. Welcome. Well, quite rightly, she had her medals with her. And I just say to her, hold tight to them. You want to talk about asset grabs? He'll grab your asset, I can tell you. I was thrilled to announce. Order. I was thrilled to announce that the Veterans Employment Program has achieved its target by employing 200 veterans by 2019, two years ahead of schedule. Okay. Madam Speaker, House will come to order the now. Thank you. The program's first annual review shows 310 former ADF personnel have been employed by the New South Wales government. This means that the Veterans Employment Program has exceeded its target by 55 per cent. The program is first of its kind in Australia and identifies and matches ex-service men and women with government skills which match their military rank and experience. It also provides extremely valuable in understanding the scope of veteran employment opportunities in the state. Madam Speaker, the majority of new hires have been in the justice and transport clusters at 70 per cent. However, veterans have been employed in areas highlighting the program's core message that military skills are highly transferable to other roles. Madam Speaker, I'm pleased to inform the House that the Victorian Government has taken our lead and recently announced its own veterans employment program, noting our success in exceeding targets and commitment to ensure our veterans receive better support as they transition to civilian life. We know that stable, meaningful employment is an effective way to combat a host of welfare issues that can affect veterans, and this program will ensure that veterans have the opportunity to make an ongoing contribution to our community. But there is still more work to be do done, Ms. Madam Speaker. Approximately 1,300 defence se personnel separate from the ADF into New South Wales annually. Is this a fact that veterans are almost half as likely to succeed in job applications? The rate of job application success for employment among veterans is only 2.54 per cent, compared to the rest of the non-veteran labour force at 4.2. So our hard work with this program will continue. We will continue to work with and educate key government sector organisations about what veterans can offer in terms of leadership, discipline and character. Childish. Madam Speaker, we have already had discussions with Jason Childish. Morgan and Boeing about their own similar programs and I encourage the private sector to embrace this worthy cause. Is that you, Member for Canterbury? Yes. You need to take yes. a break and get a glass of water or something? No, I think around. You're OK? Yeah. What a shame. <laughs> a little squeak there in the throat. What a shame. Take some medication. What is Come on and take some medication. That's a good <laughs> Madam Speaker, what a shame it is that those opposite lack the moral courage, moral courage and show continued political opportunities when it comes to veterans' issues. It is well known that some members of the New South Wales RSL State Council are being investigated for financial mismanagement, and I have repeatedly called for this iconic organisation to be reformed to ensure it represents the sacrifice of our 100,000 war dead. Madam, Madam Speaker, though, the Shadow Minister for Veterans Affairs, Linda Voltz, attempted to gain political points at the expense of our soldiers by describing the investigation by the State Government, Madam Speaker, as an asset grab. She didn't want us to investigate corruption, just like the way they wanted us to put Eddie OBD, McDonald, on all those other Labor MPs without. Order. Madam Speaker, there really is too much noise now. Speaker, Members will be out of the chamber. If they want to squeak or interject or whatever Speaker. other childish thing, the they will be out. Member for the entrance, that includes you, whether Madam you want to squeak Speaker, or interject Minister. or squeal or whatever. Madam Speaker, so the Shadow Minister is in conflict with her own, line, line. her own leader, Luke Foley, who last week I welcomed, tweeted that he is willing to work with the State Government to reform the RSL. <laughs> This is obviously in stark contrast with the Honourable Linda Bolts and the other place who said any investigation was, and I quote, had little justification. Madam Speaker, the opposition says there is little lost. There was, the, the opposition says there is little justification because, of course, the, the RSL is led 
by its chief, yeah. by its president, John Haynes, a former Labor Lord Mayor of Parramatta. And what did he do to Glenn Collins? A Labor Lord Mayor of Parramatta. So once again, uh, from the Labor Order, yeah. you know what he's up to. Once again, Madam Speaker, those opposite want them, their, their own Labor identities to be held Member back for from Justin Hills. Two minutes is granted. Of course, Madam Speaker, I'm heartened that the Labor Party leader has now decided to admit that the government was right and is indeed doing the right thing. Madam Speaker, on Anzac Day, I was privileged to attend the dawn service in Sydney with the opposition leader and I was struck by the solemn and successful mood of those who gathered in the pre-dawn darkness to pay their respects the at the cenotaph right of Martin Place. I'm really surprised that we this, would nearly have to interject on this, this sort of me, subject. This for me illustrates oh. how the New South Wales community is commemorating the centenary of Anzac and I look forward to more veterans being employed in our public service agencies. Lest we forget. Thank you. Call the member for